it's not by happenstance that we are all United Methodists. In fact, we've been doing this witness at the United Nations over so many years, uh, Richard, in the early years of the preparation of the Universal Declaration on, of Indigenous Peoples, and now, Holly, with your participation in the UN Decade uh, on Indigenous Languages, and of course, your work with the World Council of Churches in the Reference Working Group on Indigenous Issues, and the United Methodist Commitment to an Act of Repentance with respect to our participation as a church, organically as well as our people in the pillage and plunder of indigenous peoples, their resources and their land. What does that mean as a United Methodist pastor? It's, it's a very difficult dynamic we have to wrestle with because we're part of a colonizing entity that has done this historical violence against indigenous peoples. And this is something that calls me to be a part of this community because I want us to live in wellness at some point in time where we can help to be a catalyst to restore those things that have been jeopardized and taken from indigenous peoples. So when we think of language, when we think of ancestral domains and territories, when we think of these things, I would hope that people of faith as an act of repentance, as an act of growing together, uh, this worldwide community of multiple species, we would live in harmony with this Earth Mother, and we would live in harmony with peoples of the Earth, and especially for, for us, for indigenous peoples, so that our languages can thrive. What are the points of confession? Because without confession, the act of forgiveness is not complete. Well, I think it begins by recognizing every Methodist church is on indigenous land is on stolen land. And so there is a certain responsibility that comes with that. I'm not trying to run a guilt trip. I'm saying literally, we need to acknowledge where we're at and how to move forward. Likewise, then there needs to be some kind of genuine effort to connect with supporting indigenous communities in a real way. There are a few examples. My mom is uh, Pastor Don Helton in Ishtabekwa and in her church, she has always had a multilingual uh, sermons in indigenous languages and integrating indigenous cultures. She's always had um, a lot of diversity in the churches that she has served, and she has always been sensitive to each of the people in her community's uh, cultural differences. When we support the diversity within our own churches, we are basically telling many of the multicultural um, indigenous people in our community that we see you, we hear you, we accept you.